You are welcome to your favorite platform, Literature Hub 247, a free online literature class. This class is about an African novel, that interesting African novel titled Redemption Road. Redemption Road is written by Emma Shaw, and the novel is in the 2026 to 2030 Wahek syllabus. Earlier on this platform, will be called the background story that led to the writing of this novel. We've also discussed the plot summary, the character analysis, the themes, narrative techniques, as well as chapters 1 to 27. So if you need a link to any of those videos, just make a request through the comment section that I should send you the link to the videos on Redemption Road. And I will send it to you. Let's go into the classroom. Redemption Road by Emma Shaw, Chapter 28. Before we continue, in Chapter 27, we discuss how Bendu discovered the death of Commander Cobra in the newspaper reports and how the police have come to arrest her. That's where we stop. That's chapter 27. Now, chapter 28. Bendu is furious when the police officer tries to uncuff her. She steps back angrily and fixes her eyes on the officer. The officer explains to her once again that they have the warrant to arrest her. Calvin also cuts in and it results in a hot confrontation among them. Kevin tries to make some moves, and one of the officers says they don't care who he knows. You remember, in chapter 27, Bendu is already prepared to go out with Kevin until the police officers came in. Let's continue. Seattle and Terrence come down the stairs at that moment. Sarah asks the police officers about their mission there. The arresting officer explains that they have the warrant to arrest Bendu to question her about the Moses Vani case. He demands for the warrant and looks at it, that is Terence. They then tell him that they are taking Bendu to Central. That is their central office. Terence explains to Seattle who accused him of allowing Bendu to be arrested that the warrant is genuine. Seattle then suggests that Terran should call Kesley, the chief for police, who is Terran's friend. Terran says that he had been in touch with him a long time ago. Kathy then cuts in that they will go to the station to sort it out and says there's no basis for the arrest. Terrence says we wait in case there is anything. Bendu refused to ride in the police car, but rode with others in Kevin's SUV. The police led the way to the police headquarters. Bendu comments that the police did well by bringing a car to arrest and not a pickup truck. Kevin concludes. Bendu puts a call through to Councillor Gray to meet them at the police headquarters. At the police headquarters, the police lead the way and ask them to sit on a long bench in the hallway outside the director's wing. Bendu is surprised that Councillor Reeves himself shows up at the headquarters. Kevin brings him on the whole situation. Reed then condemns the officers for arresting Bendu. He says they are not sure yet if Vanin is murdered. This confrontation alerts Edwin Kesley, who comes out of his office with a frown face. His countenance changes, smiling when he sees the lawyer. The two of them greet and Kesley greets everybody. Bendu says in her mind that it's getting better. Rich clears his throat and tells Kesley that Bendu is wrongly arrested. 
The latter then clarifies that Bendu is not being arrested, but she's invited to clarify some things for them. He has that Lieutenant Tape and his son arrive to interrogate her. Kevin asks Kesley if she will be released after the, de after the questioning. He answers in the affirmative and says he will soon leave for his home. That is uh, Kesley. Seattle requests for Kesley's card in case there is a need to call him. He opens his wallet and gives his business card to Seattle with pleasure. He sends greetings to Terra, Seattle's husband. The police director leaves as he said. Lieutenant Tape does not arrive on time. Before he arrives late in the night, they have been moved to the holding room where other suspected criminals are brought. Reeves also leaves for home in the midnight and has to be called when the occasion calls for heat. Caffeine and Seattle stay with Bendu. It's almost debris when Tapi arrives. They are all hungry and tired. There is a heated argument when Tapi insists on interrogating Bendu alone. Bendu later relaxes to get overheat and goes back home. Bendu follows Lieutenant Tape to his office downstairs. She stands while the lieutenant searches his file cabinet. A security guard her with an M16 joins them later. Tape brings out a file looking at Bendu. He tells her that they meet again. Bendu then asks him why he didn't notify her when Vanim was found. He replies that he's asking her the question. That is, he is going to ask Bendu that question. Tapia takes her to sit and gives her a form from the file. He asks Bendu if she owns a weapon and when she saw Vanin last. She replied that she doesn't have any weapons and that she saw Vanin about three weeks ago when he attacked her. She then asked Tapia when he died. Tapia responds that he expects Bendu to tell him that. Bendu says in her mind, sometimes the best response is no response, quote and unquote, as she read somewhere. She read that somewhere. Tapia concludes that Bendu was annoyed with the attack from Vanny, hence she killed him. She's at, I mean, uh, Tapia is accusing Bendu for the death of Vanny now, that uh, she killed uh, Vanny because of the attack on her. Bendu tells him straight to his face that she didn't kill Vanny and asks if they don't have the coroner's report and estimate the time of death. Tape, who feels insulted, frowns and asks Bendu where she was last weekend at about 3 pm. Bendu answers that she was with a friend at the Palm Hotel's rooftop restaurant on Saturday and was at home on Sunday with friends and family. Tape then asks her whether she has the receipt of the place. Bendu replies that she should go and ask the workers there. He tells her that they will do that and in the meantime, Bendu will be detained until the investigation is concluded. Bendu blinks back tears on her face and looks away from Tape, who closes the file. That is chapter 28, now chapter 29 of Redemption Road, written by Emma Shaw. Bendu follows Lieutenant Tape upstairs, along with a guard following closely. She's surprised how badly she's treated when somebody like Vani goes about freely. Tape doesn't even respond to her, and she wonders when the investigation will end. She shakes her head and says in her mind that it is a perfect example of ADT, which means any damn thing. That is a joke they tell the Liberians in the diaspora who inquire about the security situation in Liberia. They will tell them they have an ADT security system in the country. That means anything can happen at any time. That is any damn thing, ADT. 
They are now at the lobby, and some employees have arrived for the day's work. Kaffee and Seattle rise from the bench to embrace Brendu. Tape looks as they embrace and tells them that he will miss Bendu on self recognition. Bendu looks at him scornfully but keeps quiet. Kaffee asks if that's the end of the whole thing. Tape replied that they get in touch. Bendu owes herself until their outside when she breaks down crying. Kaffee owes her, comforting her. She begins her composure almost immediately. There's not much conversation on the way. Bendu says she's moving back to her place. But Seattle advises her to stay until everything is resolved. Kaffee also buys the idea, but she's adamant that she has made up her mind. She says she has nothing to fear since Cobra is there, as suggested by Terence earlier. You know, Terence has suggested that maybe Benny should go back to her apartment since Commander Cobra is dead. Kaffee tells Bendu as they approach the building that they will have to reschedule their housing. Bendu apologizes and says she will call him. The lovers kiss and Kaffee wait to see them entering the building. Seren's phone rings as they open the apartment door. Seattle shouts his name, but there's no response. Terence is not instant, but his phone is ringing. Seattle picks the phone when it stops ringing and searches for the last 10 calls to know the callers. She raises her eyebrows and frowns. She doesn't reply to Bendu's question or her reaction, but just shakes her head and puts the phone down. You know? The author has make use of suspense here, you know. Uh, the uh, Terence has not revealed what she discovered from Terence's phone, so on that side, as a, that's make it a suspense, you know. With the leader as, as a leader, you'll be interested in knowing, uh, you have interest in knowing the uh, what is what does uh, Terence see in Terence in uh, what the other sees in her husband's phone, but that's information. It's not revealed here. So that's why it's a suspense. She lifts her eyebrow and frown. She doesn't reply to Bendy's question or her reaction, but just shakes her head and puts the phone down. You know, Bendy's trying to know the reaction of Seattle here, but she just keep quiet. She asks Bendy whether she's still going back home. She says it's the best option and that she needs to give her and Terran space. To discuss. So that is uh, chapters 28 and 29 of Redemption Road, written by Emma Shaw. Please, if you are new on this platform, try and click on the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you will be part of this class. And whenever we release any video, you are going to be notified. Like this video, you are free to share it on any social media platform. Invite your friends and colleagues to join us. And as I used to say, teachers in the house, introduce this platform to your students. Parents alike, introduce the platform to your children. If you have any question, you can send it to the comment section there. Or if you have any comments about this platform, just send it to the comment section and it will be attended to. Thank you. Let's meet in the next class.